Praise the Lord. I'm Gary Bailey, and this is the I Bible School. We're continuing our series on a life of prayer. And today we're talking about prayer, watching and praying. So join us for this great lesson. All right, I want to get right into it. Uh, last, uh, the last lesson we talked about the vigilant soul and the importance of watching in our prayer. And, and we're going to continue uh, talking about uh, watching and praying. In, um, and when we talk about this, we're not so much talking about uh, physically looking out at something, but we're talking about uh, the internal life of prayer that each one of us has. And uh, we see this in Luke's gospel, in Luke chapter 20 and 21. Uh, Jesus says says this. He says, uh, um, well, let's see here. Uh, Luke chapter 7, 20 and 20, oh, 17. Sorry about that. I'm looking at my notes wrong. But uh, Luke chapter 17 and verse 20. He, he, he says, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation, neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. What a powerful statement. The kingdom of God is within us. All that we need, all that uh, we would ever want, we have access to internally on the inside. Jesus said something similar in Matthew's gospel in the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 6. Let's uh, get over here. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 6. He says, But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. What's he talking about? He's not talking necessarily about going into a physical place closet. He's talking about your innermost being. He's talking about your spirit man and all that's available to you in the spirit. Uh, in Luke's gospel, he said, the, the kingdom of God is within you. And here he says, enter into your, uh, enter into your closet and your father who sees in secret, your father sees your heart's desire. Your, your father sees what it is that you uh, want. And uh, he goes on talking about this kingdom uh, in verse 10. He says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. So uh, he wants it to be done in the physical realm, even as it is in your spiritual realm. So what do you have going on on the inside? Do you have uh, healing in there? Is there salvation in there? Is there blessing and good things on the inside? Because what you have going on on the inside, he says, I want to show up on the outside. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth, in this physical realm, even as it is in heaven, in the spiritual realm. Praise God. Mark eleven twenty four says, uh, after Jesus uh, gave us that great verse on faith, in uh, Mark eleven twenty three, and I'll just uh, just mention it. Uh, uh, Jesus said, "Have faith in God, and whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith." And he goes on, in verse twenty four, and says, "Therefore I say unto you, What things soever you desire when you pray." Believe that you receive them and ye shall have them. So again, we see this internal life going on, this internal uh, operation of the spirit uh, happening. What things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you'll have them. Uh, Luke's gospel, uh, the disciples came to him and Luke chapter 11, and he said, uh, they asked him, he said, teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. 
And uh, let's look here in, in verse 1. It came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. Uh, you know, it's interesting that John taught his disciples to pray. What do you suppose he taught them? I believe he taught them how to prepare their hearts in prayer, you know, uh, to repent, uh, to forgive, uh, to make things right on the inside. Then you have a clean uh, a clean thoroughfare, a clean pipe, so to speak, between you and God, between you and heaven. So, uh, but Jesus said, I'm going to teach you to pray. And he said, uh, when you pray, our Father, which art in heaven, we need to pray to God the Father. Uh, let's skip down here to verse, uh, chap uh, verse 5 in this same chapter. And he said unto them, which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, friend, Lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine is in his journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. Now that word importunity is an old English word. It just means to uh, pray with passion, to pray with consistency. Uh, I like one uh, definition, shameless persistence, just to press in uh, and asking God. And we're talking about coming to a friend. We're talking about someone we have a relationship with and Jesus wants us to approach him as a friend would. And he goes on here, he continues talking about prayer. And uh, he says, And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. You see the passion and persistence that's involved here in prayer. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? So we need to press in in prayer. You know, I like to say it this way. Uh, many times as we start to pray and ask God for something, for bread, for instance, well, instead of bread, a stone shows up. God's not bringing the, the stone. God has nothing to do with the stone. But so many times the devil shows up before God shows up and gives you uh, something negative or gives you uh, an alternative. Uh, but uh, we need to press in and receive God's highest and the best for our lives. Uh, so if you pray for bread, continue to pray until the bread shows up. If you prayed for a, uh, for a fish, uh, bypass the serpent and, and continue to pray till the fish comes. Or if you ask for an egg, pray until the egg comes. Don't settle for a scorpion. Don't settle for trouble in your life. Pray through to receive the best and the highest that God has. Um, in Luke 18, Jesus uh, mentions a parable here in this uh, this great chapter on prayer. And he begins it and says, he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. And there he talks about a certain judge in a city. Uh, there was a judge which feared not God nor regarded, regarded man. And uh, he brought his uh, appeal before the judge. So we're to pray and not to faint. In Mark's gospel, Mark chapter 7, we see the Syrophoenician woman who did not give up but continued to press in in prayer. In verse 24, we see, And from thence he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon and entered into the house and would have no man know it, but he could not be hid. For a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. This woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation, and she besought him that, that he would cast forth the devil 
out of her daughter. So you see the uh, persistence in uh, in this woman to uh, come to Jesus. And, and Jesus kind of put her off at first. He said, well, let the children first be filled. For it's not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it unto the dogs. And she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord, yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. And he said unto her, For this saying, Go thy way, the devil is gone out of thy daughter. What a wonderful, uh, um, uh, what a wonderful thing. This woman continued to, um, uh, continue to pray. And so um, what, a, um, what an amazing thing. Praise God. Uh, we see this same uh, this this same uh, situation in Matthew's gospel, and I like the way Matthew puts it. This woman came to him in in Matthew fifteen and verse twenty two. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, "Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil." And he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying. Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I'm not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And that's true. Jesus was primarily uh, sent to his own people. Um, but he answered and said, I am not sent, unto the, uh, sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. But she continued. Think about that. He had rebuffed her twice. Uh, she came back the second time and worshipped him. And then she continued and said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee according as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. So you see here someone who was unwilling to back off but continued to press in. Uh, James chapter 5 and verse 16 again we see about the uh, the consistency of prayer and the passion of prayer in uh, in Isaiah. Let's look over here in James uh, James chapter 5 starting at verse 16. And again, he says, Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much, has great power. Uh, Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Praise God. Uh, that's the kind of prayer life we want. And, and uh, the Bible reassures us, James, uh, James assures us, hey, uh, Elijah is not much different than you are. He was a man of like passions. Uh, he was, you know, he felt the things that you and I feel. He experienced what we experience, uh, but yet he prayed and God heard his prayer because he prayed and would not faint. Praise God. So we need to continue in prayer. Resist the enemy in prayer. And understand that prayer is a great weapon in our lives. Praise God. Let's look over here in Matthew's gospel. Jesus asked his disciples to watch. He says, watch and pray. Watch and pray. We see in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 that Paul was in watching. Uh, in chapter 11, uh, it says again that Paul was watching. Praise God. Uh, let me say this about prayer. Prayer, strong prayer, consistent prayer creates strong minds. So uh, when we pray, we need to continue to press in with strength. And in Luke's or in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 3, for consider him that endureth such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. So let's look to Jesus as a great example of a strong prayer life. 
praise God. Uh, Colossians chapter 4 again, verses 1 and 2. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Now watching means we have an obsession with the answer. We're looking to the answer. We're looking to see things changed in a physical manner in, in, uh, in the earth, that the Holy Spirit would touch this physical plane. Amen. In prayer. It's not just spiritual. It's not just hidden. It's not just the secret kingdom. It's bringing what's in secret out into the open so everyone can see it and see the blessing in your life. So let's say that again. Watching is an obsession with the answer. Worry is an obsession with the problem. So we need to focus in on God and, and be obsessed with the answer. Uh, I love the scripture again in, in 2 Corinthians 4, uh, verse 18. Let's look over here. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 18. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Praise God. What a clear, clear picture of how we're to pray. Not looking at the circumstances, not looking at the bad situation, but looking at the eternal, looking at the plan God has for our lives and for the lives of our loved ones and for his plan worked out in our life. Um, I want to uh, uh, finish up with the scripture here in 1 Kings chapter 18, verses 41 through 44. It says, And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of an abundance of rain. Before he had seen anything, he heard something in the spirit. He was listening to God. Remember what the Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So Elijah heard something in the spirit. He says, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. Now it hadn't rained for three and a half years. So Ahab went up to eat and drink and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. And he said to his servant, go up now, look toward the sea and he went up and looked and said, there's nothing. And he said, go again seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot and get thee down that the rain stop thee not. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, he saw a little cloud. He went up seven times, then he saw a little cloud about the size of a man's hand. And uh, it was shortly after that, that cloud grew and grew. And the next thing you see is, is it's raining and it's pouring. So praise God, I want to encourage you to watch and pray. Join us again for another great lesson talking about a life of prayer. I'm Gary Bailey. And this is the iBible School. God bless.